teaching in Florida this winter doing camps, I'm stressing the importance of balancing the rotation with the drive of the hands and the extension and the snap, the wrist snap. The wrist snap is what guides the bat around and you have to have that right balance but it has to be done in a thirtieth of a second so basically done in the same motion and right here my hips are really strong the rotation and the arms are strong extending but the wrists are small muscles so what you don't understand by just watching video is you have to start to try to snap your wrist from the very start. I'm trying to snap my wrist from the very start but it takes a while for them to overcome the inertia of the rotation and the drive of the hands just to catch up. That's why watching guys like Matt Brady here or watching Davis Billadello, they have to be starting to snap their wrist from the very start and even though it doesn't look like it, it looks like there's a rotation lag and snap, it takes a while for the wrist to catch up. So I think that's a flaw that we see in a lot of swings. And I'm going to look at two swings here from one of the best players in the pro game, Andrew Collins. Here's a rotation, there's a stab and a snap. Let's watch that again. Let's figure he's trying to snap from the start and that um, he has to catch up and um, just at the right time because he's snapping from the very start. That's a 30th of a second. Now let's look at a swing where he's late on the snap. Comes over the top. There's the rotation. There's the extension, the drive of the hands. And watch how the knob comes up. There's a little hesitation. And then he rides over the top. What I'm saying is I think that in a lot of cases we see a swing like this, you might say, well, he didn't drive the knob or the hands towards the bottom of the ball that came up. I've seen a lot of swings where by simply being more aggressive from the start with the wrist snap and trying to drive the bat head into and through the ball that it cracks the swing. Now the other thing you lose when you don't have a good wrist snap is bat speed and exit speed. Look at the difference between the right good swing and the left a bad swing on how soon the bat head reaches the ball. And this is done in uh, 120th of a second, so each one of these frames is a 30th of a second. And you can see that's just a beautiful swing. And again, I'm saying that the wrist snap is being driven hard from the start, and it's just catching up to the rotation and the extension right at impact. And if you watch side by side, bang, impact, and there's one, two, three frames, which would be three 120ths, a 40th of a second, that uh, the other swing is slower. So look at Collins, he hits 107 miles an hour here, and on this next swing, which is very similar to the good swing we saw here, he hits uh, 102 miles an hour. And so I'm going to show you the difference on how to kind of compute that. We're filming with a camera that goes 120 frames a second, so watch his hands, watch how many frames it takes to bring the bat head to impact, because the bat head's lag back is pivoting to be three frames. Three frames at 120 frames a second is 140, is 140th of a second rather, and the bat's going to move 3.7 feet, that computes to a bat speed of 101 miles per hour, and he hit an exit speed over there of 102 miles an hour. So here's a poor swing, a poor snap. Uh, count the number of frames it takes to get there. You'll find it's four. And with a poor wrist snap, that's going to be one thirtieth of a second, not one fortieth of a second to move from lag to impact. Figure the same amount of feet of distance, it's 82 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour or less. So that not only do you get a poor strike with a poor wrist snap and that done soon enough to be in balance, but also you get a slower bat speed. That's how these guys here, Collins will hit up to 115, 16, 17 miles an hour. And right here on a certain day when it was warm and softball amazing, spring training is over 100 all day long. 107, 108, 111. And gives you a measure of consistency and power that you just don't see otherwise. So let's relate this to a couple guys I had at camp. Seven year old guys in good shape. Here's Randy, not a big guy, just a great swing here. But watch the second swing where he kind of rolls over the top, kind of drags it around. Good swing on the left. Bad swing on the right. All right. Let's watch the first part. What breaks down? Stride looks good. Hands come back. They look identical. And let's see. Once he starts to rotate, he's trying to snap the wrist. All right. The left wrist is going to start to turn a little bit. That'll keep the bat on the left from dropping. But look at on the right. He's not snapping early enough yet, and the bat head will drop. But on the right, if you're snapping your wrist, you can't overpower the rotation, the drive, but you can keep the bat head from dropping. That's one of the things you see. The bat head will drop less. And then when you come through to snap, the wrists are just catching up right there because we're torquing them early, trying to snap them from the start as we rotate and drive. We'll make good contact. And right here, he tries to snap late, and he can never catch up. Good snap here. Cut through the ball. Beautiful. And on this one here, the snap is just late. 
you know, and I would say, well, you're driving the knob up, but really the snap is what's late, and that's one thing you can really work on. Once the ball bounces off of a good snap right there, it's amazing. Bounces off, and watch right here on a bad swing. It almost just rolls off the end of the bat. You know, that's probably 20 miles an hour, just like Collins was. It bounces off on a good swing, and on a bad swing where there's, there's a very poor snap and kind of a golfing snap, it just kind of rolls off. So, snap earlier. Now, here's Bob. He's another 7-year-old I had. Very strong guy. And he should have some home run power. Well, watch his rotating snap here. Great level swing. And let's just say he's snapping his wrist earlier here, whether he knows he's doing it or not. He is. Look at that. Left wrist changes position. It doesn't roll over, but it breaks just a little bit. That strong hip and that strong hand drive, when the wrists finally catch up after that opening centrifugal force, you're going to get a good snap through and you're going to drive the ball. Just a beautiful job. Now let's look at this other swing here where everything looks pretty much identical, but he snaps late. And he's rolling over because, look at the knob comes up, the left wrist is not keeping, the left wrist and the wrists aren't torquing to keep that level. A good swing on the top, watch how that left wrist, you can see it, it's very subtle, but the wrists are trying to snap from the start and they just catch up. And on the bottom, because the snap comes late or it's lazy, it's non-balanced, the bat's going to roll up over the top. So, certainly uh, just a great swing by snapping early and getting in balance. That's how you, you know, really develop good bat speed and good consistent power. You'll find that that snap has to be much quicker and much more crisp to make up for the, the tight rotation that you have. The stronger the rotation you have, the more your bat head wants to drop throughout the swing. So you're going to have to work on really getting that snap to be quicker and more forceful and also playing around with the angle. Instead of just swinging around sideways like this, you might have to you know, pretend uh, to go over the top more, get a little bit more of an aggressive angle with the snap.